Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable is an okay part. It tells a story of which many different and unique characters do some crazy shit and semi kills quite a lot of people. Like, what the fuck, Josuke? <laughs> Only really in this little town in Japan could characters like Shigechi or Josuke come from, and with the wide array of characters in Morio, only really one stands out with an entire part's worth of development and growth. Kuichi Hirose is that standout unique short playboy that I also wish to be my dad that I found actually quite captivating as I read Diamond is Unbearable. I originally thought that Koichi would just be that short supporting kid character that we have all seen before, but he actually quickly changed our viewpoint with his ever-changing and everlasting display of courage. Koichi fits a stock character type as a dynamic, growing, supporting character. As a dynamic character, he changes and grows as the story unfolds, which is how a character like Koichi becomes special in the first place when he's put up against the bigger characters, both physically and in terms of the bigger story in Diamond is Unbreakable. Like for example, Jotaro or even Josuke. Dynamic characters, which is often reserved for the main character, responds to an event in the story and change in attitude or outlook because of that, which perfectly describes Koichi during the two parts that he is in. Kuichi is a shy but considerate teenager who goes through quite a lot of character development during the events of Part 4, Diamond is Unbearable, gradually becoming a more helpful ally and learning how to pick up girls. Wish I knew that. First thing to know as one of Kuichi's traits is his just friendliness, appearing both polite to his friends and to strangers alike due to his gentle heart. This is Kuichi at the start of Diamond is Unbreakable, and even though he never stops being kind, he becomes more comforted in himself whilst interacting with older characters like Rohan or even Jotaro. He usually doesn't intend to harm his opponents, but this could change if he's angry, so when the moment calls for it, this short playboy can be quite scary, but of course, you can never find it in his heart to kill another person, regardless of the morals. But if you chat up his girl, aye, 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 aye. Kuichi's role in this story resembles that of a deuteragonist in Diamond is Unbreakable, since he plays a very important part in situations where Josuke, the main character, gets in, well, trouble. It's even at the point that if Kuichi was in present, then Josuke would probably have been beaten by one of the few stand users like Otoshi or Azumada. Two stun users who had placed Josuke in quite a bad spot and would probably have beaten him if it wasn't for Kuichi who actually intervened and assisted him in both these fights. I can't forget to mention that Kuichi was also pivotal to actually putting in a stop to Yoshikage Kira during the final moments of the finale, which also proved that he indeed was a reliable guy. Another one of Kuichi's traits is his courage, which could be inferred from how the other character seems to notice a change within him, and also through Heaven's Door, Kishibiroan's stand, which exposes Kuichi as a cowardly individual, yet can be brave if the moment calls for it. Kuichi's courage is what enables him to grow as a person, and later even evolve his stand. Kuichi was shot with an arrow whilst making his way to school with Josuke. That arrow, as we all know, was a stand arrow, awakening Kuichi's hidden power within. However, only an egg manifested. Kuichi's stand was not yet born since Kuichi himself was not ready as a person. That would have killed him if Josuke did not intervene, but thanks to some time and a short swindler named Kobayashi, Kuichi was given an opportunity to awaken his stand. The fight against Kobayashi and his lock stand, which took place in Kuichi's very own home and his sister and mother being there taken hostage, Kuichi took matters in his own hands, and that conflict was very important and a major turning point in Kuichi's development, since it was basically his first sign of growing braver and stronger as a person altogether. As we know, that also coincidentally was the same fight where his stand Echoes was awakened. Kuichi's stand might have been awakened, but that was nowhere near the end of his journey, since a few more episodes in, Kuichi is confronted by a 
girl? Yukiko Yamagishi is a high school girl who has a crush on Koichi because he still kind of retains his timid nature. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Anyways, as we know, Koichi is a kind of a simp and he got captured by a girl against his own will and he was soon placed in a very similar position as the fight he had against Kobayashi. He was alone and kind of forced to fight her and this required even more courage from Koichi since Yukako actually had a far more dangerous stand than Kobayashi. Of course, Koichi ends up winning the battle with his echoes having evolved to Act 2. At this point in the story, Koichi is quite comfortable. He has friends, he has a girl and he seems quite just happy. Koichi doesn't really get enough screen time during the latter parts of Diamond is Unbreakable since a lot of his development was in this early section. But after she gets his death at the hands of the killer Yoshikage Kira, he is very adamant in finding him to exert his own sense of justice. Yoshikage Kira is a horrible person. He murders people and he has a very special fetish. But one thing that he's good for is that he puts Koichi in a similar position as the previous two examples as he evolves his echoes into Act 3 thanks to this encounter with Yoshikage Kira. He puts Koichi in his place, beating his ass so hard that he finally accepts that he's actually quite cool and that his girl actually likes him even though he's very short. Either way, after investigating a clothes store, Jotaro and Koichi have found Kira out, which made him reveal one of his three special abilities that his stand Killer Queen has. The ability is a small explosive tank that follows any person. It is called Sheer Heart Attack and it injured Jotaro quite badly if it wasn't for Koichi's help. Sheer Heart Attack is what caused Koichi to undergo his final growth as a person, his echoes having finally evolved into Act 3 and he manages to beat Kira up at least enough to make him choose another identity by surviving long enough until Josuke and the others would come to help him, finally ending his character arc. Koichi really puts up with a lot of bullshit during the events of Diamond is Unbreakable, and the fact that he stays strong throughout it all is even more impressive. Even though Koichi might be scared, he fights through it with the help of his friends, a little similar to Speedwagon now that I think about it. He is the everyman who gets the chance to shine, and that is probably why I find Koichi to be so interesting. I will say that I wish he had a bigger role later on, as his kind of role in part 5 felt more like a mandatory cameo of a previous character, similar to what he did previously. But what I did actually really like was his friendship with Rohan. I have no idea why Rohan likes him so much, or at least why he hates him the least, but it's quite fantastic. Rohan is never really seen being bros with anyone else, like he's with Kuichi, and I guess that is really cool, since I actually do really like Rohan. Kuichi is a very interesting character, I like the way that his character developed during the events of Diamond is Unbreakable and I think it's a very cool way to kind of change the short supporting character from the previous three ones that we had before, what Smokey was cool I guess, maybe. Overall, everyone knows that Kuichi is actually quite cool, whether you like him or not it doesn't matter because Kuichi will always be Kuichi. Well, no matter how many times people might bully Kuichi for being short, at least he got more pussy than most of you guys. See ya, Space Cowboy.